Right, I'm going to take a look at the collective action here of a stack of ring kites and what comes out at the bottom of them when they're in motion. Now remember, they're all in tension, so everything has to be pulling away from something. And here I've got these vector diagrams on each driver wing here describing what the forces are that are working um, at any point on that kite. Now, I've you know not, not changed with respect to where it is on the kite here, but the average of what comes out of the kite, you, know, you can be described as there. And because it's getting transferred down lines, that, that's okay, we can do that. But out of the wingtips, there'd be more of this force pulling outwards, because you can see that that's pulling away, and a lot of that force would get transferred through the skin. And on a ring where you've got three kites like this, could be any number, then those red lines, they tend to cancel each other out and just keep this ring expanded or pulled, you know, pulling away from uh, the root of that asymmetric kite there. So that root is getting pulled out towards here because this is moving through there. So the whole thing normally spins around in that direction. And as it does so, there's greater lift uh, across this wing surface. Uh, that cord gets uh, a lot of wind go over it and uh, it shoots up that way. So the whole thing wants to pull up. Now that pull gets transmitted down to the next layer, to the next layer, and each one of these driver kites is going to be adding into the ring below it a pull. So as you go down the kite, you're going to need progressively thicker lines to cope with that extra, and it's additional because that adds on to that, adds on to the next one, adds on to the next one, and at the bottom, you're going to have a great big amount of force going up. The other thing that's cumulative is this force to make it want to spin. So, uh, you know, a kite um, where the wind's going that way is going to want to spin round. So this one's want to spin round, and because this is pointed in the same direction around the axis that it spins in, that one wants to push it round, and the following one wants to push it round. So they all want to push it round. That means that force there is cumulative as well. So it's cumulative on this ring. That's going to want to pull this ring round as well. And it's got its drivers, which are cumulative on that ring, trying to get the whole ring to turn around. So uh, this ring is going to want to give a component uh, of you know, twist to that one. There'll be drag, of course. Um, but you know the resultant uh, overall force is that there is a want to go round like that. And it will be resisted by the ring below. So you know, this one will be trying to go faster than that one lets it. And they'll both be trying to go faster than this one lets it. So at the bottom, what comes out, remember the, the reds, uh, cancel each other out and it's just as well they cancel each other out um, and they're trying to keep this they're trying to keep the rings outward because if we only had lift and drive well that would work you'd be able to get a bit of tension to the bottom but um, there, there would definitely be a want to compress this okay if you have any torque tube and you um, you twist a ring at the top at the bottom, what's or you know, midway, it's going to want to squeeze itself uh, and compress itself. The fact that these uh, kites are set with this bank angle, where they are pulling outwards, definitely helps you. And of course, the the radius here definitely helps you transfer torsion forces to the bottom, helps you to cope with that. So large radius, uh, a positive expansion force, means you can transfer over tension torsion down to the bottom and it's cumulative so at the bottom you have this great big lift and it would only be a function let's just see a uh, of the you know the overall total of lift um, and the overall total of drive that would come out so you know for each one it'll it'll give so much that they'll you know bits of drag um, there will be losses through the system but you're going to get a cumulative amount of those five rings above uh, that comes out at the bottom. That's going to be pretty nifty. So as uh, discussed on that recent paper that I just released, uh, different settings for this bank angle, uh, say on the lower kites, will cause more inflation, which when you've got more torque going down at maybe a similar um, diameter, or maybe even a shorter diameter lower down, so it's uh, preparing to interface with um, power takeoff rings at the bottom. Then if you've got more inflation force, you're able to deal with a bit more torque as you go down. That's dependent on the whole thing spinning, of course. There's an awful lot of dynamics to look at in this. 
However, it's shown okay in prototype. I think this can uh, expand quite well. We're going to have to find out.